Welcome back to the show. It is your girl Sarah right here on the sunrise. And it is the 2nd of July, a beautiful Friday, if I put it that way. And also something we're all looking forward to because Fridays is, you know, Fridays are actually the best day of the entire week. And I know I'm not the only one that thinks that way. I know you think like that too, because Fridays are all about relaxation. Fridays are all about, you know, finally looking forward to the weekend and especially because of how tiring and stressful our weeks have been especially in the middle of a pandemic it's very very important that we sort of um it, it's very important that we um that we focus on the fact that it is a weekend that we can have a lot of fun and we can focus on ourselves during this weekend okay so um that is what i'm very excited about uh, today and <laughs> I know you're excited about it too. So make sure you text me on 0785247473473. So that way you can tell me how excited you are as well. And that is something I would absolutely love to hear from you. Now, you're hanging with me, Sarah, and this is, in fact, the final of my show. But uh, don't worry, because I'll actually be here back again on Monday to keep you company. But until then, I want to actually get into this discussion about... Um, about this neo drama series, or actually a docu series that is that uh, Tracy Ellis Ross and Oprah Winfrey actually announced about black hair. Now, um, this this is something that we're going to be talking about right now, and I think it's something that's very important because there are so many things we'll be talking about as well. Okay, so make sure you stay tuned. But before I get into that conversation. I want to quickly tell you um, to follow us on our socials, which is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And also make sure you download our app, which is available on both the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And that way you can actually make sure that um, you can be a part of this conversation any time of the day, anywhere in the world. And that is definitely, definitely going to help you with, um, you know, coping during lockdown. So make sure you do that. But um let's actually get into this conversation right now tracy ellis ross and oprah winfrey are in fact announcing a tv show about black hair so the docuseries it will be called the hair tales will feature intimate and authentic personal stories about black hair okay now i will be talking about black hair you know uh, why it's so important that they have this kind of series and also the the, the stigma that surrounds black hair and when i mean black hair i don't mean like black hair but you know hair hair of black people you know uh, afro hair that's that's basically what i'm talking about now the blackish actor tracy ellis ross has actually announced a new tv show about black hair and the team behind it will all be women of color so i think in terms of diversity in terms of um you know, making sure uh, in terms of diversity and in, even in terms of representation, this is something um, to look forward to. I mean, it is definitely a development, right? Because the entire team behind it will be women of color. Now, Ross will actually executive, uh, Ross, Ross rather, will be the executive producer um, um, of the Hair Tales alongside Oprah Winfrey and Mike, uh, Michael Angela Davis, uh, who is the co-author of The Meaning Behind Mariah Carey. Now, um, the docuseries will in fact connect intimate and authentic personal tales of black women's experiences and how they're connected to much bigger societal and historical themes. So obviously, when it comes to black hair, um, there has been a lot of stigma about it. You know, there has been a lot of um you know negativity regarding black hair as well and we've heard of so many different different instances especially or even incidents especially in the uh, in, in the in the united states of america rather um of how uh, people with black hair you know um ha got harassed and abused and bullied and sometimes even killed simply because of their hair you know, simply because uh, simply because of the structure of their hair and what it sort of represents. Because we know and we understand, and I'll be talking about it as well, we know that when it comes to black hair, there have been certain stereotypes about black hair, right? Especially if you're someone with um, dreadlocks, then chances are people are going to look at you in a way and, and think you're a criminal or a thief because that has been the stereotype. And these stereotypes have in fact been very, very detrimental. They have been very negative and they have caused a lot of problems for black people all over the world right and it's important that we talk about this it's important we deal with it because we need to make sure that the future generations are much more aware and they understand the suffering and the oppression of black people right especially 
you know, in instances where they have been, you know, traumatized, tortured, beaten, bullied, um, assaulted simply for being themselves. Now, something else we also need to talk about is cultural appropriation. Now, if you don't know what cultural appropriation is, it's basically when, um, to, to put it simply, you know, for example, if you take cornrows, if you take dreadlocks, you know, those things, um, when it comes to black people, those were the things, uh, if, if, you know, if they had cornrows or they had deadlocks, they were in fact, you know, tortured for it. They were looked down for it. They were, um, stigmatized for it. And they were, you know, they, they were told, you know, it's ugly, you know, fix your hair. It's unprofessional. You basically degraded those people because of their hair. Right. But how cultural appropriation works is if you're a person, you know, if you're a person who has more privilege, right? For example, if you're a white person and you have, uh, and you put uh, dreadlocks or you have cornrows, then you're not going to get called out for it because you're white, right? So that is what cultural appropriation is. It's essentially when a person who has a higher privilege than you, or, or you know, a person who has higher privilege uses or uh, you know um um you know for example if it's like a, if it's if it's a dressing you know if, if it's it's a if it's um something you wear or if it's a hairstyle a person of privilege actually does it but doesn't actually get called out for it the same way a person with less privilege does it right which is something we have seen happening around the world now obviously you've seen how many times justin bieber got called out for cultural appropriation because of his dreadlocks right and that is what it is basically when you are a person with privilege you can get away with things that people who are who, whose culture is that wouldn't be able to get away you know like i said uh, so many instances in the united states so many situations around the world where black people have actually been bullied beaten and assaulted simply because of their hair or because of the way they look or because of the clothes they wear but especially if you are a person with privilege you know uh, in this instance we'll take if you're a white person then chances are if you do it you're not going to get called out for it and honestly that is um that is something that's very very unfair that is something that is you know not not cool at all and you know i think not cool is the nicest way to say it because it's in fact very very traumatizing it's in fact very disrespectful as well when you take these cultures that have been degraded when you take these cultures that have been put down and you try to make it this fashion aesthetic for yourself which is probably the the, the worst way in which you can disrespect someone now, since we're talking about black people, you know, let's actually look into, let's historically look into some of the oppression, you know, that they face. So obviously, you know, it started out with slavery, you know, how there were slaves and, you know, the slaves literally had no rights and, you know, like, that's that's what the word slave means right you have no rights you have no freedom you have a master you don't have any free will that's that's what the life of a slave was. And, you know, if you if especially if you're a female slave, then you would get raped, you would get assaulted, especially by, you know, your master, um, by your master. And, and if you were married and you had a child if, and if you had children, then your children would only be allowed to be in that household for a certain time. And then you would sell those children as other slaves. So actually, when you take a look into black history, it has been very, very, you know, you know it's very sad. It's heartbreaking because they're also human beings. Why are you treating a human being differently just because of their skin color just because of their differences if anything we should just accept and and you know we should we should be be proud of the fact that there are so many different people out there who can exist but obviously that's not how we are it's all about asserting dominance it's all about you know trying to show which race is more powerful and whatnot and you know that's that's basically what it is you know even world war ii was like that that's what um that's what happened you know with uh with the with the holocaust and everything you know it was about trying to prove how how great the aryan race was so obviously you know when it comes to or when it comes to black history that is in fact um very scary as well because you know these people were treated less like people because of the differences and um the thing is, even though we're in 2021, you and even though slavery was abolished a really long time back, black people are still treated that way. You know, there, there, there is a lot of um, discrimination. There is a lot of institutionalized discrimination within the system, especially when it comes to black people. And, you know, we, we saw this a lot when um, when George Floyd was murdered. Right. We, we saw how the whole black life 
Black Lives Matter movement, um, you know, how it came up and it was, it, it rose all over again. And there was this new fountains of activism, new fountains of, um, you know, justice, wanting justice, wanting uh, fairness, especially when it came to Black people and, and the lives of Black people. And um, that's honestly, that that's that's obviously because of all the, uh, the racism they face and all the discrimination they face as well. And given the fact that when it comes to, you know, proportionality of punishment, when it comes to how people are treated and the way you look at, you know, Black people, there was a lot of issues that they had to go through. So that's why I said it's very important to historically look at the struggle of Black people and then sort of begin to understand why there is a lot of stigma about them and their hair, right? Um, now, for example, the best uh, the best example I can think of right now is sometime back in the United States, they actually passed this law where uh, certain hair types were considered um considered uh, un uh, unprofessional you know and most of these hair times happen to be uh, most of these hair types rather happen to be hair types that were uh, that were there for black black people right and that in itself is what i mean when i say institutionalized racism because if a white person probably had you know did an afro with their hair you know you would consider it you know the biggest fashion statement you know it would be oh my gosh you know it's the most trending thing we all need to try it because that that is what it has been even like historically um you know you would take something from a very um you would you would take something from a culture that has been degraded that has been put down and humiliated and then use it as your fashion aesthetic and that was probably the worst way to disrespect a culture to disrespect a certain group of people that had gone through so much of struggle that that was oppressed like crazy and you, you would just make a fashion statement out of it like oh you know this is a new cool thing i'm just going to completely ignore the fact that you have been penalized assaulted and tortured for it and i'm just gonna make it my fashion statement which is basically what it has been, right? So make sure you stay tuned because we will come back to this conversation. We will get back to this conversation because it is, in fact, a very, very important conversation that needs to be had, right? But until then, we're going to head into a small break. But make sure you stay tuned because after this break, we'll be back to talk about it. Now, there's a lot of conversation around who pays more taxes, if it is the rich or if it is the poor, right? But when you are basically going out and during a day, you know, you, you go to a restaurant, you have to pay taxes there. If you buy um, a car, you have to pay taxes there. So why is it even a conversation that, you know, the rich pay less taxes or um, the poor pay more taxes? Why is it a conversation like that? Because it's true that the rich generally pay less tax. A rich person walks into a Tesco's or a Sainsbury's, they're not going to get a different bill than another person, right? They're still going to pay the same VAT on those goods, they're still going to pay the same thing. So that's all the same. However, the differences come in in if you can pay yourself from your own company, you can structure it in a way that you pay less income tax through uh, paying a bit of salary, paying dividends and so forth and then also deferring income. Also your pension payments or contributions can be different. So that increases your, your tax sort of gap, if that, you know, if, if you want to use it that way. Where a PAYE person just gets paid salary and bonus. And now those are the most highly taxed sources of income uh, in the UK, definitely, you know, in, in the UK. We've seen it, right? If an owner of a, of a large public traded company does something wrong, irrelevant of what that company does or how valuable that company is, the stock generally falls uh, into a pool of nothing, right? Because in a public company uh, where the stock is traded openly on the stock exchange, the value of that stock is driven by supply and demand, it's driven by emotion, it's driven by news, it's driven by, you know, quite a lot of variables over and above the actual accounting or uh, total net worth of that company. I mean, we've seen it, right? If an owner of a, of a large public traded company does something wrong, irrelevant of what that company does or how valuable that company is, the stock generally falls uh, in, into a pool of nothing. Right? Uh, and the company may still have value, it may still be doing quite a good thing.
But now, if you say to a child, if I went up to a child and said, you've had one to forget, God, there'd be an inquest. <laughs> they'd, 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 they'd me. Why did you reject my son? Oh, I haven't rejected your son. I want to talk about, you know, how uh, the generation gap, you know, has how much has changed, especially when you check the youth nowadays in comparison, you know, to people back in the day. Uh, I'd say when I was younger, it was more disciplined. Not now. In comparison not now. to now. Not, not at all. Not now. You know, the way, the way things are uh, nowadays, the younger generation, you seem that they can't accept the word no, if that makes sense. They, they can't, they can't they, accept rese- rejection, essentially, is all you're trying to say. Yeah, they can't accept the word no. So if you say, how did I do? Or you didn't do very well. And they get upset. You know, and when I was a youngster, uh, my father used to say to me, if I, because I used to be sport mad when I was very young, I was to have sport mad, but like participating in different sports, and if I had a bad game, for example, you yeah. might say to me, you had one to forget. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that sounds like a smart guy. I mean, yeah, that, that's the real fact of the matter, yeah. You know, he said to me, you had one to forget. Get over it. And that was it. So I just want to stand and do it again. But now, if you say to a child, if I went up to a child and said, you've had one to forget, God, there'd be an inquest. <laughs> I mean, why did you reject my son? Oh, I haven't rejected your son. I've just, or daughter, I've just told them that they need to buck their ideas up. Hey, that's the truth right there. I mean, if you think about it, if you check the generations, like right now in the in the US as well, I've seen a lot of these things as well in the UK. You know, you, you get medals for participation. But what's the point? What are, the, what are you trying to? Yeah, what's the point? Either you win or you lose. People are so afraid to put that whole notion of losing. You know, when it comes to right now, the generation gap is just crazy. You know how much a lot has changed. Social media has taken control of our lives, and we don't even realize it anymore. We're crippled because of it. That's absolutely right, Nick. Because as you said, you know, nowadays it seems that you get you get rewarded for failure. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, for, for the life of me, Nick, I can't get my head around that. Perhaps I'm just getting old and morbid, I don't know. I just can't get my head around how you could be rewarded for failure. back to the sunrise it is a girl sarah and we're talking about a very or rather we're having a very very important conversation because we're in fact talking about um black hair and we're talking about how tracy ellis ross and oprah winfrey uh, have actually announced this new tv show about black hair which is basically a docu-series and we're talking about it but also you know while we're in that conversation we're also talking about why it's important for us to have this conversation why it's important for us to um you know make people aware of all the of all the stigma of everything that that a lot of black people had to go through and what this um series actually hopes to achieve so that's what we're talking about now like i said i'm very very excited to be here and it is a final lot of my show but don't worry because i'll be back again on monday but before we head into this conversation i want to quickly remind you that you can follow us on our socials which is facebook instagram twitter and tiktok and that way you can stay updated about everything we talk about right whether it's you know sports entertainment info um, entertainment technology health whatever it is you can always be a part of this conversation and you can always be informed and updated which is something very very important in this day and age so make sure you do that but also um I want to quickly remind you that you can download our app both on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. It's available for both iOS devices and Android devices. And that way you can be a part of this conversation any time of the day, anywhere in the world. Okay. So make sure you get the app. Make sure you, you know, follow us because we have some amazing content for you. So make sure you do that. But let's get back into this conversation, right? Um, 
Now the show, which is called, um, which is called uh, the Hair Tales, um, like I said, is it, it will connect intimate and authentic personal tales of Black women's experiences and how they're connected to bigger societal and historical themes. So um, now Tracy Ellis Ross said that, like many women, she can trace her own journey to self acceptance through her hair. The actor said in a statement, because the series is personal and universal, American and global. It is a love letter to black women. And I think that's my favorite part because, you know, we're finally trying to get rid of all these ridiculous norms and narratives about black hair. You know, it's so beautiful. If anything, you know, it, it's just a different type of hair altogether. And it's so, so beautiful. I absolutely love black hair, you know? So it, it, it's very important that they're finally trying to break away from all these negative narratives, these negative stereotypes that exist about black hair and especially discrimination and um, the way people are treated because of the type of hair they have, you know? basically how they're bullied they're abused they're tortured and whatnot and that's why it's very very important to actually finally have this conversation and pay attention to that so um davis actually added that there, there is a story in every curl coil and kink of their hair and that this show will actually be a dynamic adventure through these stories of ancestry and innovation politics and pop culture ritual resilience and revolution but will mostly reveal humanity and what's important is I think the show will actually affirm black women. It will inform others and it will, in fact, inspire everyone, right? Because that is what they're trying to achieve through this show. The show is about breaking down those narratives. It's about, you know, making sure you tell you tell everyone, you tell, tell the whole world about these stories of community, you know, your ancestry, where you're from and why, why this kind of hair is so, so very important, you know? And I know it sounds like a very... It sounds like something that's not big because it's hair, right? Like, why would you want to talk about hair? But what's important is, like I was telling you earlier, because there is so much of stigma surrounding Black people's hair, because there's so much of stigma about the way they wear their hair, it's very important that this that this docuseries finally discusses all of it, right? Like I said, you know, even when it comes to things like cultural appropriation, when it comes to, you know, privileged celebrities wearing hairstyles of, you know, certain cultures that that these cultures were degraded and um, stigmatized for, it's important that we discuss this. It's important we have this discussion so we can break those narratives and also because we can, uh, we can make sure people are informed, they're educated, and they are aware of all these issues. Now, um, Ross actually said that the series would be about how the story of black hair also illuminates a, bro a broader narrative about around black identity and culture because she said that hair is a, is a portal into the souls of black women, which I think is very true because it drives straight to the center of who they are. And their goal is to share this vibrant community where we where they hold a sacred space for each other with everyone who's listening or, you know, everyone who's watching as well. You know, because like she said, it is in fact something that is personal global you know it's personal and universal it's american and global and it's it's a way of appreciating all that struggle you know that sense of community and, and your ancestry for all those amazing you know for the amazing hair that you have right and you know if you if you read poems from maya angelou especially you know phenomenal woman you you'd understand the the, the sort of stigma there was for black women because it's about finding her identity it's about finding that self-confidence it's about finding that sense of self that was lost that sense of self that was you know destroyed and taken away when 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 there were slaves and when slavery happened they sort of destroyed this whole identity of black people because you wouldn't weave them as anything other than slaves they weren't even human they were just slaves like they had no rights they it didn't matter it didn't matter what they did it didn't matter what they did and that's why it's very important that um that uh that 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 it's it's very very important that we finally have this discussion and make sure that we are aware of all these negative stereotypes that um exist when it comes to black hair now timothy alice has just texted and he said this is super didn't know that there was a story about a uh, story to hairstyles well i'm glad you're learning something and i'm glad you're enjoying it as well because like i said it's important that we have this conversation it's important that we educate people about um 
that we educate people about things that they don't know about, things that they aren't aware of. You know, Relax Radio Radio is all about uh, education. It's all about, you know, making people informed about everything that's happening in the world as well. So very excited to actually talk about it because this is something that I've noticed a lot. And I've seen a lot of my friends also, you know, be degraded, be, you know, stigmatized for the kind of hair that they have. And honestly, you know, watching someone else suffer that way is in fact very, it's very disappointing. It's very heartbreaking because you're just basing someone else's, um, you know, their worth based on things like their hair. But the thing is, this story is all about making or bringing that importance about or bringing forward that importance about, about black hair. Now, something else I need to say as well is that um, even when it comes to hair products, right? Now, obviously, especially, you know, when you're a woman, there are so many different hair products that you use because hair is very, very hard to maintain. I can I can relate I've been there, but, uh, you know, my hair is much, much easier to maintain. But when it comes to, you know, black hair care products and whatnot um there is a specific set of hair care products for black women because their hair textures are so different you know it's beautiful it's different it's thicker and because of that they have this separate set they have a separate um set of hair care products as well and they actually contribute uh, all you know all black women actually contribute to one dollar in five dollars that are spent for hair care products so obviously that means that they do play a substantial role when it comes to you know hair care uh, to hair care in in the cosmetic market and self-care market right so obviously it's important that um we discuss you know things like um so like social narrative narratives cultural narratives surrounding black hair as well so getting back into what ross was saying about you know black hair and how she said that that the goal of this docu series is actually to share this vibrant community where they hold a sacred space for each other and where they appreciate the beauty, where they appreciate that hair. Now, this series has been announced as the Crown Act. Okay, if you don't know what the Crown Act is, it's basically um, creating a respectful and open workplace for natural hair. And what this does is it basically prohibits discrimination based on hairstyles. And it has, in fact, become a law in 12 U.S. states. Now, that is what I told you some time back as well, that when it comes to certain hairstyles that you can wear to work, certain hairstyles are, in fact, considered unprofessional. And like I said, a lot of those hairstyles belong to the black community. It is, like I said, very quite more often than not, it is black hair that is stigmatized and looked down upon. And because there are these laws that actually you know, that there are these laws that um, prohibit your, you from wearing your hair the natural way. They ask you to change your hair texture and whatnot. It's in fact very disheartening and disappointing as well because, you know, for, for a country, it's quite ironic though, for a country that talks a lot about democracy, for a country that talks a lot about, you know, freedom of rights and people having rights to do whatever they want to do and for a country that is considered the pinnacle of democracy, a lot of people in the United States actually have no freedom to do what they want. And like I said, a, a you know, especially people in the black community, you know, they, they can't wear their hair the way they want to. They can't even wear their hair in the, in its normal texture. So it, it just goes to show how ridiculous, you know, some countries are because, you know, you'd call yourself democratic, you call yourself, you know, the, the free land, but people are really not free to do what they want. But that is that is that story. But that's a whole other story, which we can have some other day. But getting back into this story about hair, right? Um, the hair tales will actually continue Ross's agenda to celebrate natural hair. And in September, in September 29, actually, she launched uh, a black hair care line called Pattern Beauty, where the natural hair movement might be. So basically for the natural hair movement of uh, the natural hair movement, rather, might be a new might be new for a lot of people in, in that it is, you know, infiltrating and penetrating all aspects of the beauty industry and the beauty culture. Right. It's also changing people's narratives and understanding of, of black beauty and black glory. Because the thing is, they actually have been beautiful and glorious forever. And that's what she's told in to Entertainment Weekly all the way back in 2019 as well. It's just, you know, these women have always been beautiful. They've always been glorious and they've always been so confident. Like, they're so beautiful, you know. So it's it's quite sad that you're putting down uh, a certain community. You're putting them down and you're sort of portraying them 
uh, as as a community that that's not that great you're putting down the fact you or you know you're just um completely ignoring the cultural significance as well so it's very very important that um that this hair that that this docu series actually discusses all of it because i personally think in a way it's a way of opening it you know opening up um and breaking all these negative narratives this stigma that exists about you know being black um and sometime back we actually you know uh, some sometime back we actually spoke about you know Beyonce and and how it, there's this whole conversation about you know how how they're using the baby bump to to market themselves or to to sell their songs and what not right now what's important is even Beyonce what she did was actually try to break that stigma about black bodies right now make sure you stay tuned because i'll be back after a small break to actually talk to you keep talking to you about you know black bodies black hair and why this docu series is going to be so important in breaking specific um, narratives and specific you know stereotypes that exist within uh, within the black community <laughs> One of, the, one of the easiest ways to increase your net worth is to ensure that you have higher cash flows. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to not buy things on higher purchase, not buy things over months and months because you can't afford them now because you want it. It's kind of that delayed gratification. Rather than buy that couch, that car, that stereo, that computer, whatever item, and pay it off over. 12 24 36 months at an interest rate rather invest that money make do with what you've got and then after 12 24 36 months take the money that you've now invested and buy that good an asset could be anything uh, that appreciates or reduces a tax bill so it could still be a liability but it reduces their tax bill And I'm not going to go into the uh, technicalities because that's out of our remit. However, for our use or our purpose, what we are talking for the listeners here is, I would put this definition of an asset forward. An asset is anything that increases your income. Anything. Now, there's a lot of conversation around who pays more taxes if it is the rich or if it is the poor, right? But when you are basically going out and then during a day, you know, you, you go to a restaurant, you have to pay taxes there. You buy um, a car, you have to pay taxes there. So why is it even a conversation that you know the rich pay less taxes or um, the poor pay more taxes? Why is it a conversation like that? Because it's true that the rich generally pay less tax. A rich person walks into a Tesco's or a Sainsbury's. They're not going to get a different bill than another person, right? They're still going to pay the same VAT on those goods. They're still going to pay the same thing. So that's all the same. However, the differences come in in if you can pay yourself from your own company, you can structure it in a way that you pay less income tax through uh, paying a bit of salary, paying dividends, and so forth, and then also deferring income. Also, your pension payments or contributions can be different, so that increases your your tax sort of gap. If that you know, if if you want to use it that way, where a PAYE person just gets paid salary and bonus, and now those are the most highly taxed sources of income uh, in the UK. Definitely, you know, in, in the UK. Back to the show it is your girl sarah keeping you company um on the final hour of the sunrise i'll be here all the way until nine but until then um to actually get back into what we were talking about we were talking about this new docu series docu series rather that has been uh, announced by tracy ellis ross and oprah winfrey um in terms of appreciating black hair and destigmatizing all these narratives that exist regarding black hair right so this um 
this is what we were talking about. And if you're just tuning in earlier, we took a look into, you know, the, the historical struggle and the oppression of Black people and why Black hair has been so stigmatized. We also spoke about cultural appropriation. We spoke about, um, you know, what, what this TV series means, especially in terms of the future of Black women and why it's so important that this TV series, uh, or rather this docuseries is now, you know, being released because it's breaking all of these negative narratives about Black hair. So before I actually get back into that conversation, I want to quickly remind you that you can follow us on our socials, which is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. You can always um, be informed. You can always be updated about, you can be the first person to actually be updated about everything that is happening all around the world as well, especially because it's important to be informed about everything that is happening in the middle of a pandemic, okay? So um, that's good. And also make sure you download our app, which is available on both the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And that way you can be a part of this conversation anytime you want so make sure you do that and make sure to text me on 078-5247-3473 as well if you have any um any thoughts and experiences that you would like to share with us okay so make sure you do that but getting back into this conversation now um you know we were just talking about the stigma that exists when it uh, uh, exists when it comes to the black community right now we'll also talk about you know black bodies we'll talk about how there is in fact a lot of stigma that surrounds it and uh, and like i said um you know when when beyonce revealed her pregnancy she actually made the black body a subject of admiration and you know the thing is she broke the, all those um stigmas that existed about how you know bodies should look like especially black bodies and she also paved the way um for a lot of black celebrities in the future to you know to make sure that their bodies are admired to make sure that people don't stigmatize their body now she um uh, so something else that um davis actually said that is that you know we must still continue to speak up about the change um that and the understanding that influences policies like the crown act okay because culture influences policy and it will take a further 38 states to actually make it a law be before it becomes a national mandate and that is why it's very important that um we start having these conversations we start understanding why things like hair is very important to certain communities and what it kind of means for these communities when you sort of um, create these narratives that it's that it's completely normal that it's in fact very admirable and that is in fact it, it, it is in fact very very normal to you know have that kind of hair so hair tales is actually expected to debut on the oprah winfrey network and it will sim and it will also simultaneously be there on hulu hulu Onyx channel in 2022. So that's next year. But, you know, let's actually get into a little bit about the stigma that surrounds uh, black hair, because black hair is in fact, it, you know, it's shamed a lot and it's always seen as unprofessional or even portrayed as, as untidy, right? Now, despite the efforts that have been pushed by mainstream media and, and the increased exposure of black hair education, Black people actually can't always wear their hair proudly because of social prejudice. And 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 what they're doing is, is in these recent years, they're actually trying to show they're more than their hair, right? And and what's important is um a lot of people nowadays we tend to be we tend to judge people based on like one simple thing, you know. It can be something you know, something wrong with their hair, it can be something wrong with their body. And you know what, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, uh, I think that's the kind of mindset that we need to stop inculcating that there's nothing wrong with people looking different. In fact, it's good that people look different, because you don't want to have people who look the same, right? I mean, that will be so boring. Imagine seeing the same face like a thousand times, like everywhere on the streets, you know, at uh, where, where you work, wherever it is, you know, even the supermarket, it will be so boring if you kept seeing people who looked so alike right and and that's what's important because when we create this community where there's a lot of diversity where we are accepting and we are you know we're accepting uh, accept, accepting and we include all these different types of people it just goes to show that these communities in themselves are in fact accepted that these communities themselves do have a place in in our lives and especially given the fact you know we, we spoke about the struggle of black people given the fact that you know black people had to struggle so much you know in terms of um 
in terms of you know the the historical oppression they've had in terms of institutional racism and so many different things it's important that we're finally taking these steps it's important that this docu series is finally creating that narrative that black people are so much more than just their hair or or their bodies or you know whatever it is you're just creating this whole narrative that you know they're human beings you should appreciate them you should respect them and they're beautiful and glorious and that's all the more reason why you should respect them right now in recent years especially in the united states there have been several incidents that you know incidents concerning violence and the targeting of black individuals for wearing their hair now this has actually increased attention and it and it has also made a lot of people aware and it has also incited this call to action towards the mistreatment right now uh, what's important is you know black users on different uh, platforms you know be it youtube instagram twitter you know um facebook tiktok especially tiktok you know essence vogue and allure are actually attempting to um educate people they're trying to educate other people about black hair and you know even some time back um there was this whole issue uh on tiktok where where uh black black women weren't you know black content creators weren't really given uh credit for all all the dances they've created and what not and instead you know you had other people representing um other people representing those dances and that was in fact you know quite outrageous you know and, and that is just one example of how um colored people are in fact discredited how colored people are just pushed under the rug like they didn't do anything and all the credit is just given to other people you know and that's not the first example and this is not the first time it's happening as well that has been happening for a long time and what's important is more people are in fact aware of it more people are in fact you know making a fuss when you know when you try to discredit um colored creators and when you try try to make sure that they don't get the recognition they deserve because it's important because if if society and all these laws and rules and regulations that we have is all about equality it's about opportunity it's about making sure that everyone has the same amount of opportunities then why why is it that we're you know not giving these opportunities to certain groups of people to certain groups of in a community right so that is why it's very very important that finally you know they're breaking this narrative they're trying to educate people they're trying to normalize it and say look black hair is anything but ugly you know it is beautiful it's glorious and you should appreciate it because you know that is that is just how beauty is beauty is in diversity so um that's why it's important now um they have also invited the discussion of the mental and physical impacts of societal standards which could include you know extreme outcomes such as being murdered in prison and fired from work kicked out from school even bullying abuse uh, being abused beaten and profiled right and like i said for example you know um when it comes to dreadlocks uh, especially if it was dreadlocks on a black man you would always look at the person in a way and assume that that person was either a criminal or thief or they were unclean and these are just the sort of stereotypes that exist about other types of black hair as well and you know you define you define dreadlocks as hair that hasn't been combed brushed or handled or you know you just have a bunch of words that are probably like the worst way to explain the certain a certain hair type right and um something else you need to understand and keep in mind is that a lot of black men also have been profiled based on their appearances in the past you know specifically because of dreadlocks but also because they're black so there is in fact a lot of controversy there is in fact a lot of institutionalized racism there is a lot of discrimination when it comes to black people and hopefully this is what this docu series will in fact you know address they will address all um and they will address it all when it comes to hair and i think hair is something important even though they're just talking about hair you know eventually it will lead to a whole bunch of other conversations because all of those things are going to trickle down to all the social injustices and social problems that exist for black people right so um that is what this docu series will do and i have to say i'm very excited for it i can't wait to watch it and um it's amazing that they're finally you know doing this right but it's time for me to actually head out of here and make way for sala with the social roundup so make sure you stay tuned because she will be talking about so much more interesting stuff as well so make sure you stay tuned but until then i hope you have a good day and a good weekend but it's time for me to head out of here